Main Street in one American city, emergency crews rushing to the scene. The smartphones igniting, and tonight, Samsung now says it will stop making that phone in question, that customers should stop using it. But how can Americans be sure the person next to them on the plane and in that subway is listening? The suspect running into traffic on a busy interstate, the officer chasing him and tasering him. And the FBI on the case tonight, the chilling video discovered on YouTube. The man, the girl who appears tied up behind the door. Is it real or is it a cruel prank? The family and the seven-year missing persons case. This is ABC World News Tonight with David Muir. Good evening, and it's great to have you with us here on a Tuesday night. 28 days to go, and tonight, Donald Trump and that declaration that those shackles have come off and a packed audience watching him go off script. His supporters cheering him on, and all day today, Trump unleashing a firestorm of tweets, going after Republican House Speaker Paul Ryan, going after Senator John McCain, going after the party establishment for running from him. All of it after that video in which he was talking about what he can do to women because he's a star. ABC's Tom Yamas leads us off with Trump unplugged. Tonight, with Donald Trump's campaign in crisis, the Republican nominee proclaiming on Twitter he is a free man. Quote, it's so nice that the shackles have been taken off me and I can now fight for America the way I want to. At his rallies, once holding back, but now joining the crowd in their chant. Lock her up is right. No. He kept going. I have never been so ashamed of this country as what's gone on with Hillary Clinton. And issuing this warning. This is a movement like you've never seen before and you will never see it again. If it doesn't happen on November 8th, it's never going to happen for our country. Believe me, it will never happen again. Today, a Trump tweet storm attacking fellow Republicans, complaining it is hard to do when Paul Ryan and others give zero support, adding disloyal Republicans are far more difficult than crooked Hillary. They come at you from all sides. They don't know how to win. I will teach them. Last night, John McCain at his own debate asked if he'll vote for Trump. So who are you going to vote for? I think I might write in Lindsey Graham. He's an old good friend of mine and a lot of people like him. The fact is, I can't, uh, seriously, I cannot vote for either one. McCain pulling support after this video. Trump on a bus, bragging his celebrity status allows him to grope women. When you're a star, they let you do it. You can do anything. <laughs> Whatever you want. Trump tweeting, the very foul-mouthed Senator John McCain begged for my support during his primary. I gave. He won. Then, drop me over locker room remarks. And tonight, Trump attacking Clinton in this brutal new ad. Hillary Clinton failed every single time as Secretary of State. Now she wants to be president. Hillary Clinton doesn't have the fortitude, strength, or stamina to lead in our world. She it comes just 48 hours after Trump described Clinton this way. I will say this about Hillary. She doesn't quit. She doesn't give up. I respect that. I tell it like it is. She's a fighter, and I consider that to be a very good trait. Tom Yamas joins us live tonight. And Tom, as you reported there, Trump seeming to set the stage to blame Paul Ryan in part if Trump loses. What's Paul Ryan saying about that? Well, so far, Paul Ryan hasn't responded to the tweets today. But on Twitter, Paul Ryan made it a point to highlight some Republicans running for office who are, quote, principled, have a proven track record, and aren't just complaining about a rigged system. And David, tonight, campaign sources tell me that the shackles being off that tweet and the criticisms of Paul Ryan are one and the same message. Trump is the anti-Washington candidate. David? Tom Yamas leading us off tonight. Tom, thank you. Meantime, this evening, a very rare appearance alongside Hillary Clinton tonight. Al Gore and Clinton back together again. Back in 1992, the Clintons and the Gore celebrating their win. The four of them were often seen campaigning together nearly 25 years ago. And there he was today, Al Gore, who has not done many political events since his own bruising loss. ABC Cecilia Vega on why Gore decided to come out this time. Tonight, Al Gore coming out of the political shadows to deliver a cautionary tale. Your vote really, really, really counts a lot. You can consider me as an exhibit A of that truth. 
Gore standing with Hillary Clinton in Florida, the scene of his 2000 election loss. Here's something else astonishing for the evening. Take a look at the popular vote for the first time tonight. Popular vote. Even today, the painful memories still fresh. Take it from me, your vote can make all of the difference in this election. The Clinton-Gore relationship complicated. From the high of their 1992 win to their bitter falling out after the Monica Lewinsky scandal. When Gore ran to succeed Bill Clinton, he ran from him too. And I stand here tonight as my own man. And I want you to know me for who I truly am. Today's Clinton and Gore matchup, targeting millennial voter this awkward moment. About one in four millennials now leaning toward a third party candidate. President Obama recently laying it on the line. If you don't vote, that's a vote for Trump. If you vote for a third party candidate who's got no chance to win, that's a vote for Trump. Today, Gore focusing on a top millennial concern and his signature issue, climate change. I can't wait to have Al Gore advising me when I am president of the United States. Clinton riding high these days, but warning supporters not to think this race is over. I don't trust the polls. They've been all over the place in this campaign. Uh, I don't believe them when they're up. I don't believe them when they're down. I just try to work hard every single day. And Cecilia Vega joins us live tonight from Miami. And early voting so crucial, really, for both campaigns. And the Clinton team, with the Trump video in the last couple of days and her debate performances, they want to bank votes now. Yeah, David, voting is already underway in a number of states. A record number of early votes expected this year. As many as one in three people expected to cast their votes before Election Day. And Hillary Clinton and Al Gore were in this state today because the last day to register in Florida is tomorrow. David. Cecilia Vega, live in Miami. Cecilia, thank you. We turn to other news tonight and to a deadly plane crash in East Hartford, Connecticut. The plane coming down on Main Street in the middle of the afternoon. People on the streets burst into flames. Emergency crews rushing to the scene in ABC's Lindsay Janice with the images tonight. Tonight, a fiery plane crash on Main Street. So we got a fully involved aircraft on fire on Main Street. Just before four this afternoon, the small twin engine aircraft carrying a pilot and one passenger on its final approach to a Hartford, Connecticut airport when something went terribly wrong. The aircraft striking utility poles then reportedly cartwheeling down the street, narrowly missing a van carrying a mother and her children before bursting into flames. The pilot rushed to the hospital. A bystander posting this dramatic video, tweeting the plane came inches from our office, went right by the window. And David, tonight, late word, the passenger in that plane did not survive. The FAA says it is investigating the incident. David? Lindsay, thank you. And we turn next to the emergency playing out in North Carolina tonight, a dam near Fayetteville at risk of failing for much of the day. Rushing water ripping a hole in it, and tonight thousands of people have been ordered out of their homes. ABC's Philip Mena is in North Carolina. Okay, ready, lift, one, two, three. Tonight, a race to rescue stranded residents in Lumberton. We'll take care of that. Come on with us. Hey, uh... We were with residents as they rescued their neighbor, a grandmother trapped since Friday, her dog shaking. I just thought things would get better, and they didn't. About 75 miles from the coast, the small North Carolina town now ground zero of a statewide flood emergency. We don't have nothing, no clothes, no shoes, no nothing. My grandkids lost their peppers, their milk. We don't have anything. Our Matt Gutman there as the sun and the floodwaters rose. The entire part of this town is completely submerged. Hundreds of homes in this area. The destruction is so vast that not even our drone can see the edge of this flooding. New evacuations ordered overnight outside Fayetteville after authorities discovered the Wood Lake Dam leaking. First responders racing to stabilize it. They're risking their, their life to get this thing done. And to me, those are superheroes. The U.S. death toll from Matthew now at least 35. And one man was killed in an officer-involved shooting. Police say he was hostile and displayed a handgun in a flooded area. And Philip Mena with us live tonight. And Philip, we're told there are still rescues going on where you are. 
Absolutely, David. All day we have been seeing rescue boats coming and going in and out of this neighborhood. And there are parts of North Carolina that are still under a dangerous flood risk. And it will be that way for at least another three days. The governor here asking people to be patient. David. And just look at the floodwaters there days after the hurricane now. Thank you very much, Philip. We turn next here to Tulsa tonight and new reporting about the driver who was shot and killed by that female police officer who is now charged with manslaughter. You'll remember the dash to Terrence Crutcher walking to his car. A moment later, Officer Betty Shelby would fire the fatal shot. Tonight here, the medical examiner now releasing the autopsy. Here's ABC's Clayton Sandell. Tonight, a new medical examiner's report says when Terrence Crutcher was killed by Tulsa police, his blood contained the drug PCP. The 40-year-old father of four was unarmed when he was shot. At one point, his hands are up. That looks like a bad dude, too. But Officer Betty Shelby says Crutcher was acting strangely, repeatedly ignoring her commands. She believes at this point, because she is a drug recognition expert, that he is on something. Shelby says she shot Crutcher thinking he was reaching for a gun, but prosecutors have charged her with manslaughter, saying she was becoming emotionally involved to the point that she overreacted. Medical experts say PCP can cause superhuman strength and aggressive behavior, but Crutcher's family and attorneys say drug use should not have led to a death sentence. If he were under the influence of any substance, there's no way this is an appropriate way to treat him. caused a temporary deafness and that she did not hear a fellow officer say that he was ready with a less lethal taser gun. Shelby has pleaded not guilty, David. Clayton, thank you. We turn next tonight to a major development in the case of those smartphones igniting. A final decision now from Samsung. They will stop making the Galaxy Note 7 smartphone altogether after reports that even the replacement phones have been igniting. But with two and a half million of those phones already sold and out there, is the danger really over? Will people still bring them on planes? Here's ABC's Gio Benitez. Tonight, Samsung deciding to stop making the Galaxy Note 7 entirely after reports that even replacement models are catching fire. I saw a small red burst, um, and then it started to smoke, sizzle, and burn on the nightstand. At least five fires reported in replacement devices, including one aboard a Southwest flight. The FAA now warning passengers to turn them off, but flyers today are worried anyway. Are they going to turn the phone off or not? And if it catches fire, uh, uh, it spells doom for everybody on the plane. After recalling nearly a million Note 7 phones in the U.S., Samsung is now saying you should return them immediately for a refund or a different phone. But customers are worried there's a bigger problem. So because of the Note 7 explosions, yes. you came here because your phone, which is not a Note 7, started getting hot. Exactly, yes. And it's concerned as you see all the other different phones exploding. But some Note 7 owners are defiant. So if you have a problem, then you're going to go ahead and do it. Yep. But until then, you're sticking with it. I'm going to stick with it. And David, that's a problem as Samsung now works with the CPSC on a second official recall. David? That's the real concern. Will others shut their phones off? Geo, thank you. And we move on to other news tonight. We have been reporting on the humanitarian crisis unfolding in Haiti after the hurricane. And tonight, our team now reaching ground zero where they saw firsthand a slow motion disaster. ABC's David Wright is there. Apocalyptic. That's how Haiti's president is describing the damage tonight, warning the country could face famine because so many crops were lost. The only way into the disaster area is by air. So we hitched a ride with the U.S. military. It's up on the rooftops that you can really see the scale of destruction. The storm clobbered these houses. And now look up. The entire region in ruins. The people here need help. The hospital is in tatters, and they're seeing an influx of cholera cases. More than 60 people are quarantined here in squalid conditions, some two to a bed. What's her name? Sarah. 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 She's beautiful. Nurse Marielle is a volunteer. She's homeless too, but told me it's her duty to help. And this is the open air waiting room. Dozens of new patients arriving every day. And that's the huge concern here, that this isn't just an outbreak, but the beginnings of an epidemic. And in that case, the death toll could rise. David? David Wright and the team will stay on it. David, thank you. Back here at home tonight into Arizona, where controversial Sheriff Joe Arpaio is now facing the possibility of jail time. Prosecutors revealing they will charge the 84-year-old lawman with criminal contempt of court 
for defying a judge's order to end his immigration patrols in Arizona. The announcement comes less than a month before Arpaio seeks a seventh term and as he helps campaign now for Donald Trump. There is still much more ahead on World News Tonight this Tuesday. The chilling video discovered on YouTube raising new questions tonight. Is it real or a terrible prank? The young man on camera and then the girl who appears tied up behind the door. The FBI is now on the case tonight. Is there a connection to a seven-year-old missing persons case? Two homes leveled by a gas explosion. We reported on it here tonight. The $30 fix now being ordered by the government. And then the wild police chase today, the suspect running right into traffic across a busy interstate, the officer chasing him and then tasering him as cars race by. We'll be back. When I was diagnosed with pneumococcal pneumonia, it was huge for everybody. She just started to decline rapidly. I was rushed to the hospital.